I came across a useful website that's basically the D&D Beyond Character Builder for Pathfinder 2. It's not an official Paizo website, I don't actually know anything about it, but it might appeal to you if you prefer to manage your character sheets digitally. Personally, I just use paper or a spreadsheet, and if you're interested in building a character from the hardcover books with pen and paper or a simple LibreOffice spreadsheet, check out my 12-minute build video. In this video, though, I'm going to show you how to build a Pathfinder 2 character using pathbuilder2e.com. You start in the top left corner and work your way down the left side panel. Just like in the books, it's a matter of A, B, C, ancestry, background, and class. Step one, ancestry. Click on the top button in the left column to bring up the ancestry window. You have access to all the core ancestries, so dwarf, elf, gnome, human, and so on, as well as all the extra ancestries from Adv Advanced Player's Guide and from several adventure paths. I'll just choose gnome, because I recently did a video about gnomes. In Pathfinder 2nd Edition, you don't roll for stats. You get ability boosts and flaws based on your character's ancestry, background, and class. And we see here that gnomes grant me a couple of ability boosts and a flaw. Step 2. Background. Next button on the left is background. It's set by default uh, rather arbitrarily to barkeep, and the skills lore, alcohol, and diplomacy are active because of that setting. I'm pointing this out because as you change stuff in the left panel, like your background, the right panel adjusts accordingly. Watch. I'll choose Detective from the left column here. That provides more boosts, intelligence and wisdom, and a free boost that I get to pick myself. And it's also giving me some new skills. It's got training in society and lore underworld. And if I accept that and look at the skill list now, it is indeed reflecting those new skills. That's what's supposed to happen. Step 3, Class third button down is class. There are lots of other classes from other source books, but I'll choose a core class to keep things simple. I think I'll play a bard, mostly for the spell casting and uh, that bardic lore. And that's it. I have a character now, but it's essentially a level zero character right now. So I need to level this up, as it were, to level one. Step four, ability scores. You level up your character in, in this left column. These gears with numbers in them represent choices you have yet to make. So click on Set Abilities, and sometimes there's more gears and less gears depending on the choices you've made so far. I'm going to click on Set Abilities to assign ability boosts and flaws. This is an amalgamation of all the ability boosts from Ancestry, Background, and Class. They're all in one window. Some are predetermined. But you might notice some have options allowing you to build whatever character concept you have in mind. So I'm boosting my charisma as much as I can to ensure my bard is as good at being a bard as possible. But of course, I'll, I'll boost some other attributes as well. And there's a tick mark in the gear, so that's, that's done. Step 5. Choose your skills. Uh, it looks like I have six skills to choose, though, so I'll click on the skill training button. I'll pick Deception... Diplomacy, Intimidation, Stealth, and then Performance and Medicine. Those could come in handy. Tick mark, job done. At level 1, you get a Heritage Feat, which recognizes that not all members of one ancestry have the exact same traits. Click on the Heritage button to see the available Heritage Feats. There are a lot available from various source books, but I'll just take one from the core rulebook again. Fae Touched Gnome I like because it gives me a free cantrip. It's not prompting me to choose what cantrip I get, but that'll come later. At level 1, you also get an Ancestry feat. I'll take Illusion Sense, mostly because that was a default gnome feature back in Pathfinder 1. Uh, because I'm a bard, I also get to choose a Muse. At level 1, this is a class feature, so depending on the class you're playing, this will be different. But the idea is to complete all the prompts provided in the level 1 box to bring your character up to level 1. I'll click on Muse, read over some of the options, 
Enigma sounds spot on for my detective background, plus it gives me the bardic lore, which is literally one of the reasons I took the bard class. And that's it for the level 1 box. All options have been decided, and you can see a little report of some of the features you have as a result of your choices. Over on the right two-thirds of the screen, this has all been updated based on your choices, and it represents the bulk of your digital character sheet. This is the part of the character sheet that you'll interact with the most as you play the game. A lot of it's just reporting on your stats, derived from the choices you've made. Over on the left, like your strength is plus zero, dexterity plus one, con plus two, charisma plus four, and so on. Uh, AC is 14, hit points are 18, my saving throws are plus five for fortitude and will, and a plus four for reflexes. Click on the dice icon to the left of a saving throw or skill, and you get a little dice roll, including the relevant modifier. You can also adjust your current HP by clicking on the HP field and using the slider. The reverse of that is to then heal damage, and of course, you can also take a rest or add a condition. The last remaining tasks for building, though, are to go shopping and choose spells. Step six, go shopping and choose your spells. You're not prompted for this, and I guess they're technically optional, so... Click on the gear tab to spend some gold on useful stuff like rope and rations and a weapon. It's easy and pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to complete that task right now, but you, you get the idea. Click the spells tab to choose or prepare spells. Blank spell slots are provided based on your build so far, so if there's a spell slot, then you need to fill it. For instance, as a first level bard, I get five cantrips, from the occult spell list, so I'll choose those now. But I've also got two first level spells to choose, and a spell from my muse. And then finally, as a fey touched gnome, it looks like I have an innate cantrip, and there's a slot in the innate spells tab for that. I'll click through the other tabs just to make sure I'm not overlooking anything, I don't see any other empty slots, so I feel like that's done. I mean, you can click through more of the interface, adding details about your god and alignment and languages and so on. Finally, give your character a name and you are truly done. You have a Pathfinder 2E character in an interactive online character sheet. The cool thing is you can export it as a PDF or as JSON. A lot of virtual tabletops accept JSON imports. Or you can save your character to your device, so you can open it again later in this web app just from your computer. This is a cool website for players who like a digital character sheet. And as you can see, it, it makes the build process pretty linear. You start at the top, work your way down. When it comes time to level up, complete the next box on the left. Just click on the fields and fill in what they're asking. And remember to, to check your spell list as well to make sure that you don't need to choose any new spells. When it's time to shop you can, or find loot, add it to your gear. When you want to cast a spell, mark it as cast. It's a cool system. I think it'll definitely be of, of interest to many of you. So check it out. Thanks for watching.